Hey, y'all. Welcome to the People Purpose Podcast, the show that explores all the ins and outs, challenges, and opportunities HR people managers and all people face at work every single day. I am one of your hosts, Chaz Fields, and I am joined by uh, my smiling uh, workplace bestie. That's me. Hi, hey, Julie Jules. Devlin. Hey, Chaz. How are you? <laughs> hey, I'm great. Hey, Julie, where are you at right now? Right now? I, yeah. I am uh, in the true, well, Toronto would be the true north, but this is very far north, very far west. I'm in Vancouver, uh, British Columbia. It's beautiful. I was day. there. I was there Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I spent yeah. I spent a lot of time in Vancouver. It's uh the people here are great. The the food is cool. The, the scenery the, the, is amazing. The scenery is is unparalleled in my opinion. Um yep. and uh you know, just excited to talk to HR professionals here, which I which I tend to do a lot. Um <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of is HR that your job? Is that yeah, your job? It is. It's part of my job. It's part of my job. There are a lot of HR professionals in uh, in Vancouver. So yep. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, a lot of a, HR conferences in Vancouver. Yeah, it is kind of interesting. It is kind of interesting. It's a beautiful place. So, um, hey, Jules, as we do yeah. every episode, what's on your mind? Oh, wow. Time zones, Chaz. Um, let's talk about how you texted me at 5 a.m. Pacific time this morning. Here we go. No, you live know, in Eastern. Said, no, I know, I, I know, but you said, I know. And and then, and then I, and then everybody, listen, I call him out on it and he's like, I can't be held responsible for what time zone you're in, which you know what I, I'm, I, do you look at where I'm at in time zones before you text me? Oh, no, uh, he made, no, exactly. I know, no, no, because I would never text you at 5.00 AM. 5.00 AM is 8.00 AM Eastern time. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's 7 a.m. my time. I'd already had a workout in. I had already gotten oh, order ready for you. school. Oh, I was, okay. I mean, I know you're a night owl. We've done it, by the way, plug for the night owl episode, you know, early bird night owl. What, <laughs> what, it, what it, I mean, that was years ago, yeah, um, well. which, which is great. So what's on my mind, Julie, I found my new version of a fidget spinner and I've owned it for a long time and I didn't realize how much I needed it. You see these things right here uh, no, move on, in the camera? What is it? They're earbuds, but look at this. I can do this. Oh my all goodness. All day. Oh so no. So guess what I've been doing all morning? I've just been flipping open the AirPod case up and down, up and down, up and down. And I love it. <laughs> it's my new fidget spinner. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, doesn't take much. I'm Wait, a simple man, I, but, but let me say something. Fidget spinners generally don't make noise. I and your it, but I, your fidget makes noise, so what that means that you're going to annoy everybody around you. It sounds kind of like a lighter click, you know. A, yeah, you know, I like know, a, like I a know. zippo when it closes. Like all of us can hear it, Chaz. All <laughs> of us can hear it. <laughs> hey, it's I the little okay. things, Julie. I wouldn't want. Things. I wouldn't want to sit next to you on a plane. That's for well, sure. Well, luckily you don't have to. <laughs> and by the way, most people on a plane now have headphones. However, recent story: flying back from Vancouver back to Dallas. Uh, there was an individual that sat across from me. Yeah. No headphones, no yeah. entertainment, just yeah. sat there and stared forward the entire flight. It's a four hour and 20 minute flight. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no opinions. Of, no opinions. No, no, no opinions. But I, I, you know, I obviously see, see a lot. We could do a whole episode on what we've seen flying. Um, we could never yeah. post it. We could never well, post it. Well, <laughs> Well, but that's interesting. Four and a half hours is a long time. They didn't yeah. sleep. Nope. Well, I don't. I can't. I can't confirm or deny that because I did fall asleep. I worked for about three hours, and uh, the other portion I did doze off a little bit. So I can't yeah. speak to the to the hour that I was asleep. Gotcha. So, anyways, not why we're here. Yeah. Uh, as we do in every episode, here's the thing: I want to lay the groundwork for this one because a while back, uh, mm -hmm. almost a year ago, we did a mystery topic mini series where Julie. Picked a topic from a prior episode that we recorded years, <laughs> yeah, a year or two before, or a year or two prior. And we kind of asked the question, where are we now? Julie has no idea what I'm going to talk about, what I'm going to bring up, what I'm going to share. And more importantly, um, you know, let's let's not get fired 
right, Jules? Let's just not well, get buckle up, here. folks. Because buckle I, up because I, I, no, because he's going rogue. So yeah, which is uh, which I, is a I, dangerous I, thing. I'd like I know I'd like to place a disclaimer that I have no idea what we're about to talk about. <laughs> no. Right, right. So um, yeah. we'll see if you can start guessing as I give the the business stat of the day. So our friends over at Culture Partners, shout out to Jessica Kriegel, who's on our Workforce Institute board and and an amazing uh, friend of mine. They did a study at Culture Partners. There's kind of two stats, but it builds on each other. So uh, Culture Partners surveyed 85% of survey participants indicated they weren't even sure what their orgs are trying to achieve. So the missed opportunity for alignment and focus. Uh, with 93% of these survey respondents mm -hmm. said they were unable to align their work or take accountability for desired results. First thoughts? I'm trying to think about what the topic is based on that. And that's kind of difficult, but oh, wow. Uh, so it's about purpose. It's about accountability. Accountability. It's, it's about okay. accountability. So two years ago, we recorded an episode accounting for accountability in the workplace. And, oh. you know, so if I look at this stat, first off, let's just talk about the stat. 93% of the survey participants said that they were unable to align their work or take accountability for the desired results that the company put in front of them. Take what accountability. Do I don't even remember recording this episode. So that's good. Um, Your memory's <laughs> great, by the way. Always has no, been. So fantastic. Terrible. My memory. My memory is terrible. How can you wait a minute? You cannot. You cannot give me that look for forgetting an episode of. Rec I mean, that, how long ago was it, by the way? Uh, it was like eighteen months ago. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. End of story. End of story. I, I, yeah, I'm just one of those weird people who remember those kinds of things. But anyways, uh, here's the deal. So, Julie, we talked about accountability and we, we talked about manufacturing. And the approach that we took in that episode was, you know, where is trust lost or where do employees feel like trust could be lost or felt like micromanaged when in fact the manager or the leader was coming at them with a the, with the sense of accountability. And we approached it. Uh, both from our personal perspective and we, we, we just talked about a lot of things. And, and the approach I want to take today mm -hmm. is how has accountability changed in the last two years when we've witnessed, you and I both have witnessed the, the power kind of shifting back to the employer. Does that make sense? So it's that delicate yeah, but, balance. Yeah, but to me, accountability hasn't changed. I think accountability has become more important. I also think that it's become more visible when it's not there. Expand. Expand. Mm -hmm. um, we live in an era of 24-7 connectivity. We live in an era of transparency when sometimes transparency is not what the desired uh, state is, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, transparency sometimes to the detriment of, of organizations and sometimes to the detriment of employees because, and also, by the way, we live in an era where that transparency may or may not be true, meaning you could have people that are posting things or writing things that aren't, aren't necessarily true. Um, so yeah, that's where I go with it. Wow. When I say, I, when I say it's become more visible, like when there's a lack of it, that's what I mean by that. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, so I think about it from the workforce perspective, right? It's, I mean, recently, have you surveyed your audience? I did this on, on Monday when I was in Canada, did you survey how many people were hiring still or having a really hard time hiring? I don't survey that generally. What I say is what I, I yesterday in the presentation that I did on skills, um, I didn't ask, but I assumed that everybody was hiring. Sure, sure. Um, and nobody came up hiring. and said, oh, no, everything's perfect. We're running at full capacity and, and everything's yeah. doing so, so well, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so what I think about accountability at this point, Thinking about mm -hmm. how power has slowly shifted back to the employer. We, we talk about now return to office. Many of the organizations around the globe outside of the U.S. have returned to office. The U.S. is slowly making that shift back. We think about flexible work. 
that's where I want to kind of hone in on what accountability looks like in regards to productivity and efficiency. Because when we look at the broader business, okay, we look at the broader business, we do a really, really good job at holding managers accountable for output, right? Because if, if, productivity is down or engagement is down or efficiency is down 99% of the time profit is down. Can we agree on that? Yeah. But when you say we do a really good job, what do you mean by we do a really good job? Executive like, level leadership does a good job of holding okay. managers accountable. Right. However, and I think that that's mm -hmm. your, that's your purview. I think there's some mm -hmm. people, there's a lot of organizations who probably couldn't say that. I don't know that I agree with why. That because, how, but how do you because, know? How could you even know? Because if 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 productivity from the employee perspective is up, then we can already assume that managers and leaders are being held accountable, right? So so flip it on its head, where right. leaders go to managers and say, "Do your job," right? We we often use the phrase "it rolls downhill." All right, right? so you're you're only talking about productivity in relation to that in this okay. in this in this regard. Okay. Because, because, because what, what we, what we think about, I think about accountability all the time, right? I think about accountability all the time because it's a direct correlation to productivity and effectiveness and profit, right? All three of them are intertwined mm -hmm. where it often falls short when the labor market is struggling like it is right now. Sometimes it's really difficult for leadership to see that. It's not necessarily the frontline employee when it, in fact, could be the manager or vice versa. So I go back to the survey. I go back to the survey and I look at the survey and I say, OK, um, you know, there's a major misalignment between what seem seeming misalignment between leadership and the frontline employee of what the company actually is trying to achieve. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Mm -hmm. So you have an employee that's sitting there, they're doing their job. They were hired to do this job. They applied to do this job, but they don't actually know what the outcome of their job is supposed to be. My like question what, becomes, like what where the is the goal, What their goals are? Yeah, what their goals are, uh, You know, the desired result that the manager may have for them. There is a, a deep lack of accountability in that sense, right? So, so that's where I struggle. What, what is it going to take for all three areas, leadership, managers, and employees to hold themselves and the work that they produce accountable to get the delivered and desired results that they want? What do you think Con it's going to take? Consequences. <laughs> I can't tell if you're being facetious. No, I'm not real. It's going to take real consequences. But again, that, you know, that's like, meaning if I don't do this or mm -hmm. if I'm not, if, if, if I'm not held accountable for this and then this is the outcome of that, like, because so often organizations just turn sort of turn the other way. Um, and, Oh, you know, it's just so-and-so they'll get better. Oh, they've been here 35 years. They'll get, they'll get better. Mm -hmm. Right. But also I feel like that definition of accountability at, in organizations, organizations would, it would do, do them well to come mm -hmm. up with an organizational wide agreement as to what it means to be held accountable. But mm -hmm. you're, you're taking it from a little bit of a different, a different perspective where you're saying accountability is in direct correlation to productivity, which mm -hmm. I don't, I don't disagree with, mm -hmm. but I think that it depends on the level of employee you're talking about. And if we're only talking about managers, great. But I think when we're looking at levels of blame or if we're looking at who so-and-so frontline employee is not doing their job, okay, should they be held accountable or is it the manager because the manager didn't train them properly? Oh, I, I don't disagree that there's multiple caveats, right? I, I think, it, did that employee get the proper training? Did that manager get the proper training? Was the person in leadership put there because of tenure and not skill set? But uh, I don't, all the time. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that accountability is overly circumstantial, though, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I think with, like you mentioned, blame. 
All right, let's let's use blame as an example. How is blame holding someone accountable? How is blame holding someone accountable? Yeah, like accountable? if I were to, if I were oh, to blame it's not, you for it's not, it's probably putting people on the defensive. <laughs> right, versus hey, hey Julie, I've noticed that you're not doing so well at blah 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 blah, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know, I really need you to hit this goal and here's why. I'm not blaming you because you had something go on in the workplace or you had something going on in your personal life or whatever it is. It's just a matter of, hey, I have to share with you the information that I have. Can you have a dialogue with me about what the outcome should be or why you are struggling in your role? And is it possible for you to hit the desired result that I have or expectation that I have of you? Right. Mm. That's what I don't think is happening in the workplace. Mm. It's just you're you do your job. And if you don't, I, I actually disagree. I think consequences happen more often than not um, when it when it comes to when it comes to people not doing their job in the way that they're supposed to. The only. The only miss with that statement is that because people are having such a difficult time hiring the right person. Uh, to do the job or, or people to show up and be consistent in their job. Mm -hmm. They're holding on to those folks that, that are on, you know, that, that are just kind of scraping by or just doing barely enough. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But I don't know the, how long that's going to last either because of profitability and because of, you know, mm -hmm. because, or lack, 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 the lack of productivity. Mm -hmm. No, I, I think that the accountability conversation is really it's really interesting. And I think there's just so many different levels that we can look at it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that it's, I don't know that it's as black and white as I think that you seem to be making it a little bit. Um, yeah. But no, I, I, I know, I know you're a black and white kind of guy. When um, it comes to accountability, I am right. It, it's yeah, not but, to say that it's not. To, uh, and let me be clear about this. Tools, resources, communication, all contribute to someone's success and more importantly the the ability giving people or enabling people to be held accountable right yes. so so it, it is circumstantial when it comes to did you get the right training well yes. well no so i can't be held accountable or i could be held accountable in a in a wrong sense of the word if I get hired for a job that I'm not qualified for. And then I go do the job and you're like, wait, why aren't you doing the right thing? So I was never actually trained to right, do the job. That's, the way that's such is. a larger, that's such a larger conversation because this, this makes me, reminds me of the psychological contract conversation because oh, can you, by right. the way, refresh, refresh what that is. Oh, the exchange relationship between the employer and the employee as it concerns mutual expectations of fairness and balance. Mm -hmm. But meaning, meaning, am I as the employer providing you as the employee what you expect? Are mm -hmm. you as the employee providing me as the employer what I expect out of mm -hmm. you? But here's the thing. The psychological contract can be broken before day one or on day one because of people like recruiters who do not set expect who do not not that they don't set the expectations they they give people the wrong idea as to what job they're going to be doing <laughs> so so if so let's look at it from that perspective if i'm hired for a certain job and then i come in and then that job is completely changed on day one or even day two or whatever week down the line mm -hmm. how can i be held i mean I guess I can be held accountable. Oh, this is such a tough conversation. I can, See, I can, be, yeah, I, can yeah, be held, it, I can be held accountable. However, uh, I think it's about control too. What's in our my control versus the employer's control versus circumstantial control. And I think the recognition of that is exactly where I wanted to go, right? Because because accountability at the truest form of the word is, is, is black and white, right? You know, you're, you're held accountable for the actions that you take, right? Think about like a crime, you know, if, if a crime were to occur, you know, and the police find out or, or whatever, that person is held accountable for their actions in the court of law, you know, assuming they're found guilty, mm -hmm. right? That they're, they're where it gets convoluted in the workplace is 
accountability often brings a lot of negative consequences. And I still, I still don't, I still don't fully understand why, but accountability in the workplace can seem micromanaging. It can increase stress and tension. Um, you know, employees, when they feel overwhelmed or frustrated, uh, it, it, if someone comes to them and holds them accountable, it's like, wait, hold on. You need to recognize me as a person. So I think in, in the truest form of the word, it is black and white. It's the nuances of how to approach people in an individual way to hold them accountable. Right. Well, how, you, well, how do you do that? You have to train managers on how to communicate properly. And also, 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 um, you know, it's not just managers though, because if nope. I'm, if I'm, employees if have to have it too, right? Right, right. But but if I'm thinking like employee to employee, if I'm on mm -hmm. if I'm on the front line, if I'm working with ten other people, I mean, think about it. It's just like a group project at school. Oh, oh don't even get me started. Right? There's always that one person who lets everybody else do the work, mm -hmm. but they are able to reap the rewards of the hard work of everybody mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. Right. So how do you hold them accountable? <laughs> here's here's my question. And this is this is kind of a doozy. How does the frontline employee hold the manager accountable or how does the manager hold leadership accountable? Well, the relationship has to be there in the first place on all levels, meaning mm -hmm. it has to be it has, the psychological safety of being able to have open and honest conversations mm -hmm. has to be permeated throughout a workplace culture. Mm -hmm. And, and that's not something that's on, that can be done in my opinion, on an individual level, people mm -hmm. can have the confidence to have these conversations on an individual level, but whether or not they actually do have the conversations and whether or not something's done about it, mm -hmm. that is more of a cultural thing and more of a psychological safety thing, in my opinion. That's kind of a mic drop moment. It's kind of a mic drop moment. Yeah, you know, it, it goes it goes to show that that uh, to some degree we have to be a little less sensitive to the term uh, uh, accountability, right? I think so many people take it as a, a negative connotation, right? It's it's the same thing with feedback. If feedback's not delivered in the appropriate time and the appropriate manner, without an established relationship, mm -hmm. it, it goes in one ear and out the other, mm -hmm. right? And and I think when people walk into the workplace, they have this idea of what success is going to look like for them long term. Mm. And oftentimes, I think employees and people forget that work changes, you know, business changes, things change fast. And just because your manager comes to you and says, I want you to do it differently and and they need to explain why let's be real. They need to explain why before they tell them to do things differently. That doesn't happen often enough. You've, you've heard mm -hmm. me say it a million times, but the reality of it is, is that it's not a, it's not an attack. And I think people take accountability as an attack. And instead we need to have the conversation that you just had. What are the expectations when I come to you to provide mm -hmm. you feedback? What are the expectations that you have when I come to tell you that you're not doing your job that meets meets my expectations, right? Or the company's expectations or, hey, my leadership came to me and said, we have to do this differently. Here is what we're going to do and here's why, right? Yeah, but those expectations have to be set in the first place. And this is what I'm saying. Yep. So often, so often there it's, oh, you're hired. You're now the warm body. So you come <laughs> in and you have somebody who's been here, let's just say for three months, who's going to be your trainer. Right. And maybe that person wasn't trained properly. It can be a vicious cycle mm -hmm. of, of, of not holding people accountable because of lack of resources, lack of training, lack of psychological safety, lack of physical safety, lack of mm -hmm. you name it. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a million different things that we can look at here. It's, it's, it's an interesting conversation. Good job. Good job. On the <laughs> well, Mr. I, Mr. we, we gotta, topic. we gotta, we gotta throw a loop every now and again. And I, I want to give a shout out to our colleague, Mike Jackson, who's our, our Canadian counterpart. And I reached out to him and, you know, he's got an unbelievable professional history and has done some great work and will be on the speaking circuit soon uh, up north. And I, I asked him, I said, hey, listen, give me your take on accountability. Right. Mm -hmm. And and he has found that accountability is directly connected with purpose. Right. And, and if people don't feel purpose and meaning in their work, you know, the degree 
of accountability drastically decreases, right? And that's going to lead to increased errors, you know, safety risks, poor customer service scores, whatever that looks like. But he said something really great, in my opinion. I would love to know where your head is. It also means that the role of leaders, managers, and supervisors are going to have to expand from holding people accountable to building people to accountability as they look for ways to recreate moments in their work where they are directly contributing to something more important than their immediate tasks. Mm. What do you think? That's about purpose. That's, that's, how pur that's how purpose and accountability are aligned. And I think mm -hmm. when you have yeah. purpose, it's much easier and, and you have a clear vision as to what, as to what the outcome of your work will be mm -hmm. that it's easier than to be held accountable and to hold yourself accountable. Why did you choose the words will be instead of is? I don't know. It's a good question, right? Maybe that's another, I, I, there's another quarter for I, the episode. I, I, yeah. I, I, we'll, I think why is because it's always constant, right? It's constantly evolving. It's, it's. Yeah. No, it I is think, constantly evolving. It mm -hmm. is constantly evolving. And by the way, it can be circumstantial. Like I can, I can hold myself accountable for 95% of what's going mm -hmm. on in my, my world. And then the other 5%, I'm like, wait, that's not me. And then what? And then let's say you disagree with that. It's like, I mean, it's like out of the 10 things you're supposed to do in your job, I'm going to meet eight, eight or nine of them, but yeah, because I don't agree the with one? the other two, but I don't agree with the other two. I, I don't, you know, I don't, Slippery so why, slope, right? So, but, but, oh, by the way, these eight things I'm great at. Right. But the, but the other two, I'm like, mm, that's not really my job. I don't really understand. And I wasn't really properly trained on that. So you do can't you hold me accountable if I don't deliver. Oh, dangerous, dangerous. Do you want to, do you want to get better and put in the discretionary effort on the two? That's a whole nother conversation. Do we want to keep does the that? company? Does the, do I have loyalty to the company? Does the company have loyalty to me? Do I feel mm -hmm. like I'm safe at the company? Do I feel like I'm paid properly? I mean, we can keep going down this rabbit hole about why people aren't accountable or why people lack accountability or what it means to be held accountable at work or not held accountable at work. And by the way, are you a manager or an individual contributor or something else? I mean, yeah. there's a, again, but all of this, Chaz, I think all of this starts at the top of, and I'm not just talking about the C-suite, talking about the top of the organizational culture, but more so the vibe of the organization and mm -hmm. whether or not people feel safe enough to voice an opinion, whether that's a, a manager, someone in the C-suite or, or mm -hmm. someone else. I, it's so funny that what comes to mind with me and it comes to that is, are you holding yourself accountable to your mission, vision, and value statements, right? Like collectively as a whole, because those are always so broad and so vast and sometimes ambiguous. And, and I think that's, a really relevant point because if we aren't, it's really easy to say something. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to hold ourselves accountable for the actions that we create and, and then continue to, to live in day in and day out. Um, and I will say, I think UKG does a phenomenal job of holding themselves accountable as I hear and look and witness so much of what our, what our leaders and our managers and the people surrounding us do. And uh, it's a really, it's a really special place. So with that, Jules, what did you find your purpose in? Oh, I found my purpose in the mystery, right? The mystery <laughs> episode. No, this is a really interesting conversation. I think, uh, you know, my purpose, you know, my purpose always is to, you know, help this organization grow and also, you know, help this organization succeed. And mm -hmm. by doing that, you know, by knowing my purpose, I think that I can hold myself accountable. I think that's what I've learned. Boom. And uh, <laughs> I found my purpose. And this is so simple. Accountability is not a bad thing. It's oh. not a bad thing. And, and if the conversation needs to be had, if an employee, manager, leader, whoever feels, you know, attacked, based on the feedback they're receiving or the change of direction or the uncertainty or the a level of discomfort, I would really challenge people to create an environment of accountability and trust and, and transparency because the reality of it is 
personally, professionally, whatever it is, if you don't have accountability, you're never going to achieve what you really want to in the long term. And and all of us deserve at least a shot at that, in my opinion. So yeah, absolutely. Um, with that, y'all, uh, check us out. Go, uh, go like, and subscribe, by the way, yeah. go like, and subscribe. We appreciate it. And we got some really cool things on the horizon. Uh, after this episode drops, Julie and I will be coming to you live from the Sherm national conference. Julie, we've got a jam packed schedule. Do you want to highlight anything that we're going to be doing there? Ooh, uh, we're going to be having conversations. Uh, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be talking and asking questions to a lot of HR professionals to try and help us help them. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we're, uh, we're going to be showing demos of our awesome product too. Um, yep. You yep. know, so we'll, we'll also yeah. be sitting down with our dear friend, George Rogers, uh, mm -hmm. as, as we have some discussions with him and hopefully a couple of customers that you can hear kind of their stories and their journey. So uh, thanks for listening. Y'all like subscribe people purpose podcast, uh, go check out the latest research from the workforce Institute by visiting uh, UKG.com. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Bye.